whether you're a business, whether you're a personal brand, no matter what the industry is, if you are trying to sell something, social media is where you provide the credibility, where people could go in there and make their decisions on whether you're a good person or not. As a real estate investor, let's talk about the failures. Let's talk about the losses. Let's talk about how we handled hard situations. So when people want to invest in us, they're like, I know when their backs up against the wall, they're going to do the right thing. You're tuned into the Freedom Show. We are in the studio having a conversation. We are really excited to share with you. Today's guest is Q Moldrick. <laughs> Q, we are so excited to have you. But before we get into the goods, um, we want to tell um, the audience a little bit about you. This one's got a lot of big words, so hold on tight. Over the last decade, Q Moldrick, CEO of Legacy Digital, has harnessed her digital marketing and branding expertise to elevate entrepreneurs' online presence. A Penn State graduate, go Lions, Q career kicked off with a Google Analytics, utilizing big data to boost brand recognition, system efficiencies, and company culture. Her journey expanded her skills into project management, digital and event marketing, and content creation, culminating in her role as a proficient brand developer and strategist. As a freelance consultant, Q transformed small businesses by enhancing brand awareness and implementing automation solutions. Under her leadership, Legacy Digital's client portfolio grew in diversity, spanning health, fitness, finance, and education. It's now a one-stop solution for digital needs, aiding entrepreneurs in mastering online landscapes and effective brand management. Q Moldrick remains at the forefront, setting industry trends and shaping today's and tomorrow's digital landscapes. Welcome to the show. Wow, that is yeah, incredible. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Man, I didn't That's even know. Goal. Like, you nailed it. yeah, <laughs> I haven't read your bio since we started working with you. Like, I haven't read your bio, and that is like, that's pretty impressive, Q. I, I'm like, we know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's... laughs> I know. It feels like it's been a, been a journey, but yeah, all that's correct. Been that's done awesome. That. I love it. So our uh, audience knows that the Freedom Show is our one and only guest podcast. It's very rare for us to have ever wanted to bring on guests to our show. And so we've really started this show by bringing on the people that are in our network already, the people we already know that we know, like, and trust. And when I say like, I usually mean love. And you are included in that statement. And so I just wanted everybody to know that um, Q was the very first professional agency to manage us and our family of companies and what we do online. And it was um, so impactful to us. It really set us on the course to success online um, because we didn't really know what we were doing in social media. We didn't know how to brand ourselves. We didn't know what we should be saying. Um, we didn't know like what's the trends, like what are people going to engage with, what's valuable to them. And so having a professional like you on board to really lead the way um, was so incredibly impactful to us and our business. And I just want to say thank you, Q, for um, how you led us on this journey. And we're excited to have you as a result. So I want to start that we're going to get into all of that stuff right in like in the middle. I want the, I want everybody to hear about what you do. Um, but before we do that, this is the Freedom Show. And so we love to start things off with what does freedom mean to you? And just tell us about your freedom journey. Absolutely. Um, well, I could say that I don't think I've accomplished my freedom goal yet, but I have been surrounding myself with people like y'all uh, and been going to a lot of real estate investor masterminds the last several years and have learned what it's like to curate that freedom over time, right? We know you can't just wake up and be like, oh, I'm just going to go move wherever I want, golf every single day, travel the world, right? It takes time. So I would say I haven't achieved my goal of freedom yet, but I've learned a lot from you guys. You know, I want to, I want to curate that life where I could have a sustained business and still be working with my business. There's no way I'm ever retiring ever. Like there's no way I love my job. I love working. I'm going to be that person who's 98 years old, like driving to work and still involved in everything. Um, but having a business that is sustainable and, you know, is a well-oiled machine and produces the lifestyle that I want. And as far as the lifestyle goes, I, you know, 
I don't know what that looks like yet. You know, I, I feel like when I have time to sit and be still, it freaks me out. I don't like it. Um, so I'm still, I'm still in that very hustle grind mindset right now. Uh, but yeah, freedom to me looks like just having that passive income to live the life I want to live, but still be active in my business. Love it. I love that because freedom really is choice, mm -hmm. right? And we all live seasons. Um, so there's been a hustle season for Flip and I, and we were really grateful when it was over. Um, <laughs> what? Um, but uh, what? It, that's I, over. I, I think it, a lot does depend on where you're at in business and in life. You know, uh, you just got married, right? So in the season of life that you're in um, today might be different than it was five years ago. Um, and I think there's a time when you push, and there's a time when you sit back and relax. So I love the idea of. Um, freedom is very much just the choices that you're making in your life right this second and, um, freedom, the meaning of it probably changes. I know it has for us mm -hmm. as we've grown. Yeah. hundred percent. I agree with that. I love that. Okay. Um, so let's talk about, um, your business. So I want to get into the importance of building a personal brand on social media. This was exactly why we hired you. Um, as I remember being introduced to you because you were actually running the social media campaign with somebody else that I um, know and respect. And I said, hey, if she's doing this for him, I should interview to see if she'll do it for us. Oh, yeah. And I so remember because we, we had to drive to Cleveland. And so we got up early one morning and drove four hours. Yeah. And I was just like, my eyes, I was like cracking my eyes open and we're getting ready to meet Q. I'm like, no, seriously, what, who are we meeting here? <laughs> and I'm like, her name's Q. And I'm like, like from the James Bond movies? What is this? <laughs> yeah. I love it. So to clarify for everybody listening, because that's the, I have two questions, three questions now that I get asked. One is what does Q stand for? And they think it's this like elaborate name, but my government name is Susan. And growing up, my family called me Susie Q and Q just stuck. So that's, that's Love where it, it comes from. The other two questions are how tall are you? Cause I'm six one. And the other question is what sports do you play? And I play none. I'm just tall and uncoordinated. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. But you're a female business owner and I love and respect you for that. B running a business is not easy um, and is not for the faint of heart. Uh, it is a roller coaster ride and the best of the best survive. So tell us about the company that you've built, where you're at um, and how you've provided value to us with what you do. Absolutely. So uh, I could start with your first question about the importance of brand culture. And that's why people are listening to this podcast, right? And I'll dive into my story after that. I've been using this parallel lately and it makes sense in my head, maybe not to like some Gen Zers, uh, but you look at social media as the new school phone book, right? And if your phone number is not in the phone book, then people do not know how to connect with you. And that's what social media is these days. Uh, and I look at it from the perspective of a real estate investor. I go, I go to these masterminds all the time and it's, you know, a lot of stage work and listening to people on stage and round tables and whatnot. But the main purpose of these masterminds is to network, right? To put minds together. And when you go on stage or if you're speaking on a podcast or if you meet somebody one-on-one, -on -one, typically you might exchange numbers, you might exchange a business card, nine times out of 10 probably won't follow up and probably won't see that person or think about that person again until the next time you have that mastermind, right? Because um, usually they're, they're reoccurring. So what social media does is allows you guys to stay connected and share your journey in between those, those meet, meeting times. And then when you come back and that second or third time you meet that person, you're like, oh my God, I saw you guys just went to New Zealand. You've hired a social media marketing firm. Like how's life going? Because that's stuff that you've been sharing and you immediately have this bond that you would have never had if you didn't have social media. That's the reason why you should be on social media, whether you're a business, whether you're a personal brand, no matter what the industry is, if you are trying to sell something, social media is where you provide the credibility, where people could go in there and make their decisions on whether you're a good person or not. As a real estate investor, let's talk about the failures. Let's talk about the losses. Let's talk about how we handled hard situations. So when people want to invest in us, they're like, I know when their back's up against the wall, they're going to do the right thing. And they're going to do it as a team versus like, oh, I'm going to back out and screw everybody else. So there's a lot of storytelling and narrative that goes into it. And it's not just posting to sell, it's posting to show who you are at the you know core of your being. And that's that's why you should have social media. That's a plain and simple, easy version of it. Um, and what other people 
as real estate investors, the number one question I get is, well, what's my ROI going to be on this? And <laughs> I want to just say it right now and be super transparent. You're not going to see a direct ROI on social media. It is a long-term play. It is something that you can't be like, this post generated this conversion. It's something that I actually had um, a client who was posting on Facebook. They're, they're in um, like luxury global Airbnb, short-term rentals, like resorts and whatnot. And they've been posting about their journeys and their travels and the resorts they have all over the world. And this one woman booked their entire resort because she said, I've been following you on Facebook for an entire year. And you guys look amazing. You look like you have so much fun. You look like you take care of properties and you have a good staff. You have a good culture. She booked her entire resort and that took a whole year. And she never wow. knew this person was following her. She didn't know who this person was. It just came out of fruition. So there's so many different levels to it, but that's a huge component. I always tell my clients in the forefront now because social media is saturated, but there are people that are following you that you don't know that are following you. There are people following your journey and you just, you just haven't made that connection yet, but it will come in due time and it will come at the most random moments. Yeah. I want to speak to that uh, real quick uh, is... It, you can be tempted to look at your posts and be like, you know, nobody liked my post or, you know, only 17 people like my post. And this guy over here, he's got like 200 people liking my post or I only have so many followers. It's so easy to compare yourself to other people or feel like you're a failure because you're not getting enough engagement. But what you just said is so incredibly true because I have personally experienced post after post after post after post. And more than once, I would say more than 10 times. I have gotten uh, messages in my inbox um, that say, I have been following you for the last two years. And it's somebody that has never liked my post because let's not kid ourselves. I look to see who likes and loves. And, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I want to know who's engaging, right? And I look at the comments, even when I'm not even in charge, I'm going, how's the post doing? You know how they, I just want to be engaged with it because I want to see how we're doing. And I think most people do that. And I'm just surprised over and over. Hey, I want to invest in this. I want to invest with you. I have been following you for, and if we didn't just have faith and keep on doing and, and trust in the process and trust in what you just said, then we wouldn't have not have been able to help those people because they would have not have been able to get to know us in their way, which sometimes is comfortable for them to watch on the sidelines until they're ready. 110%. You nailed it. Spot on the head. And it's, it's something that Social media, going back to it being like your digital business card and how people stay connected with you, uh, there's a whole other part to it. Like social media, we are like our business, our company will provide the strategy and the consistency and the call to action and the data to start funneling it and, you know, really dialing in. But it's up to the client to really promote it on their end, right? Mm -hmm. When you get on stage, tell people to follow you, but also have a big thing, a QR code that's like, follow me on social media and I'll give you this thing for free. If you are on a podcast at the end, say, hey, give us a follow. This is our handle. Like you have to tell people about it because the digital world is super duper saturated. We actually have like a seven tools you can do to support your social media team because they're, it's not just, oh, hire and outsource somebody. It's like, hey, this is a team effort here, right? We have them doing all the work that we don't want to do. They're creating the content, editing it, posting it, managing it. But there's work that we have to do on our end to really optimize this. I agree. Well, I have some more questions, but uh, we got to jump to a commercial break real quick. So you're listening to The Freedom Show with Flip and Danny, and our guest is Q Moldrick. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. Add new income streams to your financial statement. Freedom Family Investments can help. Own property and get paid rent. Join funds and get paid interest. Wealth is well-being. Own your own future. Freedom Family Investments. Get more time to focus on what matters. Learn which investing path is for you, where to start, and who to trust. Visit freedomfamilyinvestments.com. All right, welcome back. Thank you so much, Q. So as uh, um, that commercial was playing, I was thinking about something that I really wanted to talk to you um, about, and that is um, this online presence. Um, I view it a little bit like a website, right? Because there's so many times where you can have a website and your website really doesn't tell your story. It doesn't always even show your team. It doesn't show you in your personal and daily life. So can you talk to the point of how much more credibility this social online present makes 
above and beyond your website. Sometimes you don't even need the website. It's great to have one. That's your store. But the social media piece is what builds the relationship. Can you talk uh, to that a little bit? A hundred percent. And you, you really just said it there. Uh, a website, you need one, right? It's it's like when you go on, it's for Google. When people are searching, you know, investing in Ohio, investing in Florida, or what, you know, I need a contractor for this. That's how people find you. And that's where, you know, the world is using their main search source for is Google. Uh, and it leads you to your website. But the website is very much so call to action focus, right? This is how you could connect with us. Here's a contact form. Here's our about us page. It's very generic, but it is it, it establishes that first layer of credibility, right? So people know where to go to get in touch with you and to validate that you're not some random creep on social media trying to scam somebody. But everybody has their you know, social icons at the bottom. And that's the first thing I do. And I know I'm in this world, but that is where the world is going. I'm actually, this is a, a little bit of a side trail, but the transfer of wealth is a real thing. And we have been doing with all of our clients, uh, a lot of research on the Gen Zers and how much that is going to be taking over decision-making in the future, whether it's real estate investing or products or whatever it is. And it's a real thing. And they are, they subliminally communicate online. They may not like talk to each other in person, but there's like, like you said, you'll go and you'll look at the likes or you'll go and look and see how many people viewed it. That's how they're communicating with each other. It's very interesting. There's no words. It's just more like data that they're looking at. So putting that as like a sidestep, that's where the second layer of due diligence is coming into play is people doing their additional research on social media. And that's where the narrative come in, comes into play, what I was talking about. So you want to go on social media and you're not posting, buy this, sign up for this join this, you have to post content that's personal, right? We worked with y'all on your personal brand to showcase who you guys are detached from your business. On social media, the, the, every single report you look at is different. Um, on our end, we like to put a ratio of like 60 to 70% personal content. So that's family, friends, travels, hobbies, health, wealth, and fitness, whatever it is, collectibles, just showing who you are as a person and your beliefs and values. And then the rest of it is like 20%, 30% educational content. And then we sprinkle that 10% in for sales content, right? So if you're just giving away value, talking, being vulnerable to a certain level, I do believe there's a vulnerability meter in my opinion. I think some people are just like, you didn't have to say that online, you know, or we didn't have to go that far, but that's my personal opinion. Uh, <laughs> but basically making sales the last priority because you're trying to create an authentic connection with an online audience and people can see through the BS. That's why the influencer world and creator world is becoming very, very difficult because People know when they're trying to be sold something now. They're not dumb. They're like, okay, this is an ad. Like they're using this pencil and they only use it once. Like they're obviously just trying to sell this pencil. It's not our pen. They're not, this isn't, they're not using their life swipe. But if I show me using this pencil every single day on social media, it's a part of my lifestyle. I'm, I'm not even like talking about the pencil. It's just being used. People are like, wow, that's a great pencil. This is a really bad example. But um, <laughs> if I had a product laying around, I would use it, but I don't. Uh, but you guys get the gist. Uh, so it's, it's something, a space to answer your question. It's the second layer of credibility, but it's eventually going to be the first layer of credibility. And it's a space for you to share who you are as a person first, educate second and sell last. Mm. I love that. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions and information on the show are not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss.